Right, it's Dave here. I'm with my wife, as always. Hello. And we have a very special guest joining us, Chris Hewitt from Empire Magazine and the Empire Film Hello. Podcast. Yes. How's yeah. it going? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much for, uh, for coming on the Cinema Isle. No, thank you for coming to my neck of the woods. Yes, we are currently <laughs> in Greenwich, the picture house mm-hmm. in Greenwich. Uh, yep. We're not walking anywhere, uh, <laughs> despite the fact uh, that that's the whole point of our podcast. Yeah. But we are going to have a walk after this movie. Which I'm slightly concerned about. Because it's very hot. It the hottest day of the year, I believe, so far. Yeah. So, uh, slightly worried, but we'll take a long, meandering walk. We'll try and get some shade, and I've yeah. got some water all through it, you guys. And <laughs> yes. It'll be fine. We uh, always do this somehow on sunny days we go to the cinema. Yeah, but we have picked one of the shortest features oh. imaginable. This is 66 minutes long, I think, isn't it? It is 66 minutes yeah. long. That's I know perfect. very little about this movie other than uh, it was critically acclaimed, it was nominated for an Oscar for Best Animated Feature, it won at the Césars, which is the French Oscars, and uh, it's 66 minutes. There are French Oscars. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, would, yeah. Uh, would they not just be called Les Oscars? Hosted by uh, Guillaume Cristal. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it. yeah, but they're proper, they're the proper... French art house movies. Is it they like Can and they boo at everything? I, I throw shoes. At <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I also know nothing about this movie. I don't even know what it's about. Is it about someone who becomes uh, Courgette? No, Courgette is his nickname. Oh. But in America, the movie's called My Life is a Zucchini, and probably in Australia as well, and any territory where it's called a Zucchini. That's a slightly catchier title. <laughs> yeah. Zucchini is oh. a better word than courgette. It is, it? but over here, nobody knows what that is. Yeah, I mean, I still, what, uh, to be honest, as a meat eater, I really struggle with the concept of courgette. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm a bit we're scared about this film. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're geared up for this. All right, we, we should have a battle afterwards. No, when we moved back from Sydney, I had a brief period of time where... I was calling courgette zucchinis and I was calling peppers capsicum and everyone was horrible to me and slagged me and I was like well we had to call them that for five years so unbelievable yeah. Pe- peppers capsicum. are what? capsicum Ca- capsicums that's yeah. I know it's nonsense but otherwise that's if you order just... pepper they don't know what you're ordering anyway to our so 20 this... Australian listeners <laughs> explain yourself <laughs> explain yourself now 19 now 18 because you've insulted them <laughs> and their culture um, and unbelievable we're, we're so excited to have Chris on our podcast we're like a bit starstruck um, and yeah. then oh to... I have a bone to pick with you Chris oh, oh well, let's go Good. It's always good. Oh, go from uh, Star Trek to <laughs> like immediately just having a go at me. That's yeah. fine. About I think it was about thirteen or fourteen years ago. <laughs> uh, Empire ran a competition. Uh, oh, thank for you for people to. Uh, I think I don't remember the name of the competition, but it was like film journalist gladiator thing or something. Thunderdome. Oh, Thunderdome. And Thunderdome. That you was had it. to write a review from a movie from 1999. That's right. Yeah, oh, both, did you enter as well? Yeah, we both entered. Oh, we both entered. And oh, of us so we've two bones to pick. With you. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, yeah. what, Chris, why didn't we? Why didn't you pick our entries? I mean, I presume you remember our entries. I do remember your entries. And you were the was sole that? judge. And I yes. was the sole judge, and I was involved with that. Uh, you are fully responsible. You yeah. left off a full stop at the end of the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Grammar has always been my, yeah. my failure. What did you and you spelled, about? Kathy, you spelled Steven Spielberg's name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think shocking. I did run Lolo Run. Well, see, uh, what was Steven Spielberg even doing that review? <laughs> I mean, just, yeah, you were way off. Well, just I was, a nonsense. I was doing like Elizabeth Banks and saying that he'd never directed a female movie. No. <laughs> I didn't say that. Retraction, um, retraction. Oh, Dave, you're such a loser. God, he's been carrying that I around. I did Fight Club. Yeah, that's the whole reason we've invited you on the topic. <laughs> so I can confront you. It's like Joe Pesci and Goodfellas, yeah. and we walk into an empty room and go, oh no, and then just. Well, it's more like a, um, a Muppet. <laughs> there's going to be a hit after yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've got the guy lined up. I've lived a full life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready yeah. for it. That's why we came close to where you live, so. Um, so you could die where you live. Well, you can throw yeah. my body in the river. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just so you brought the carpet. Kathy. I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, just went down with some bricks. <laughs> but we've um, gone way off topic. We have. Oh, so yeah, we're going movie, to see a movie. The best part about this movie is a, it's at a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which mm. I've never mm. seen a movie personally that has that score. There's a few. I think. I've, I've never known that going into a yeah. movie, so my expectations are very high. And also, it's a French movie so some of the animations have subtitles and some have dubbing I don't know what version we're seeing I think we've seen the dubbed version oh. okay. which doesn't matter with animations usually yeah. right yeah normally I'd be a, a subtitle guy but, but I'd, a lot of the Studio Ghibli movies tend to work very well with, yeah. with dubbing and they tend to get like Liam Neeson yeah. but I would like to hear the French so we'll see and then so are there any um, stars doing the dubbing in this I don't know I, don't know about it. I do know that Nick Offerman who is Ron Swanson in Parks and Rec nice. is doing a voice and Will Forte from Saturday Night Live is doing a voice but apart from that I don't really know oh interesting but it feels it feels it feels fairly low key it's, it's, it's kind of you know obviously I, you know, I do what I do for a living 
but certain films do slip through the cracks every now and again. And this is a film that slipped through the cracks for me, so I know next to nothing about it. I'm intrigued, That's but exciting. I cannot, I just cannot stress enough how important it is that this is 66 minutes long. I know, I know. <laughs> this is my dream. Like, 90 minutes is my cut-off for a movie, so to have something... I wonder if we'll actually leave going, we could have done with an extra 10 yeah. minutes. Do you remember 90 mi- minutes used to be the sort of standard? Comedy yeah. standard, 80s yeah. and 90s. But Barry Sonnenfeld, who obviously directed Men in Black, uh, Men in Black 2, uh, he had a... He has a saying, uh, which, which is that no movie should be more than 90 minutes long. Yeah, yes, yeah. I agree with that, Barry Sonnenfeld, absolutely. Of course, yeah. you, know, you get deep dives like JFK and stuff that you really you know, love. Some but. movies deserve it, but the average movie these days that is... And animations don't tend to be, to be fair, but... Um, the average comedy can be pushing two and a half hours and it's just horrific. Oh, it's crazy. Judd Apatow needs to rein himself in a bit. Yeah, he's that's always crazy. our classic yeah. example. Like uh, the five year engagement felt like a five year movie, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think although, that might have been another yeah, one I left. That was painful. <laughs> yeah, that was painful. Uh, we should do a very quick shout out to Sam from the Picture House uh, podcast who uh, arranged to get us uh, free passes into this movie. Yeah, today. we're so excited. And one so, day we get free cinema so. passes and Chris is coming on our podcast. So we're like, we've made yes. it. Oh, we felt yeah. like VIPs <laughs> today. Do you <laughs> notice that he didn't arrange free drinks or food? No, I, mean, uh, I don't want to yeah. cause a rut. <laughs> did, you, look, did you keep the receipt? Sam, we're going to send the receipt oh, to you. Yeah. And Chris is going to expense this. I didn't keep the receipt. Oh my God, I don't yeah. learn from Okay, mistakes. Sam, it's two coffees, uh, lemonade and a bag and of And a very loud bag of crisps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, Chris bought our drinks, which is kind of embarrassing because he's on our podcast. So um, Sam, refund Chris, please. <laughs> yeah, please, yeah. Sam. They were £45, pounds, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Greenwich prices. All right, will we, uh, will we head so in? So into, have we said the name of the movie? My Life is a Court Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my Life professionals. is a Court Yet, Oscar nominated, won the French Oscar, 67 minutes long. If you could live your life as any vegetable, what would you pick? I don't know. I'll have to wait till the end of this movie, see how the courgette gets on. I'd probably pick, actually, yeah, carrot, I reckon. Carrot? Why? Yeah. Why such a phallic... <laughs> <laughs> have I chosen the wrong one? I don't know. I just feel like there's something quite elegant about a carrot. There's something elegant yeah. about a carrot. Have you ever peeled a carrot or chopped a carrot? I hate it. They're it's the so worst. annoying. They're yeah. gnarly and mm. misshapen. I don't know. That's a very good question. <laughs> you say that. Oh, or it's yeah. a terrible yeah. question no, because I, none of us have I good answers. To well, well you, know, you, you obviously want to avoid the phallic overtones of a carrot, but then yeah. you would, you would mean, help people thinking. improve their eyesight. Yeah, true. That's so, it. That's not too yeah. bad. Uh, I'm a big pea guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> Which is ironic because yeah. it's a very small vegetable. <laughs> it's a very small vegetable. Um, it sums me up in so many ways. If you were a pea, that would be so sad. Yeah, but, uh, but, uh, but I would like to be just m- a multitude of peas. <laughs> well, you'd have a lot of friends, wouldn't you? It'd be great. Mm-hmm. Carrot, uh, carrot is a more a lone, a well, lone Well, then you wolf. and your friends would be legitimately <laughs> called peas in a pod. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'd go around, we'd be like bother boys. And <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be extraordinary. It so, would be. Are you guys up for watching the, uh, the, the, the trailer? and the ads or do you want to just go in and swoop past all that stuff and just we, we normally don't we yeah. we normally uh, sort of tailor it so that we we're just about on time or often a bit late <laughs> yeah. right. but we can't be late for this movie because I hate being late <laughs> Kathy loves doing it yeah. you 10 minutes later the movie's over. over yeah whoops um, okay bye alright let's head in see you in a bit so can you tell me a little bit about your mother she really liked to drink beer but sometimes we had fun I'm going to take you to a really nice place with other children who are like you. I'd like to introduce your new friend, Ikar. My name is Crochet. More like a potato with that head. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, he does not mess around. Dear Raymond, everything is good here. There's a new girl named Camille. My name is Crochet. She has eyes that go right through you. Hey, new kid, what'd you do to land in here? So, are you the boss? Guess you catch on pretty quick. And that's how you talk to girls. <laughs> right, uh, we are just out of uh, my life as a courgette, and we are walking through... What, what park is it? It's Greenwich Park. This is Greenwich Park. Yeah, and it's, it's the... It's middle park in Greenwich. It's got, it's got loads of stuff. It's got the uh, observatory. It's got the Maritime Museum over here. It's got loads of people sunbathing. Painting so, the picture, Chris. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's podcast gold. Oh, you know. Um, yes, so it's a gorgeous day. Um, and we saw a gorgeous movie. Mm. That's terrible. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> <laughs> we did see a gorgeous movie. It was gorgeous, wasn't yeah. it? Just, I, I, I absolutely loved that. Right, we won't go into too many spoilers uh, here. I'm not sure if there's much spoilering we can do. But uh, maybe um, 
Kathy, do you want to give a quick synopsis of the movie? And um, so it is about a little boy called Courgette. And it's really unusual for... I mean, I think it was a kid's movie, but it felt very adult. Um, so his mom is an alcoholic. And this isn't a spoiler because this is like the premise of the movie. She falls down the stairs and dies. And he's sent to an orphanage. And then it's about his experiences in the orphanage with the other kids. Um, and... I think that sums it up. Yeah, that's it. And unlike kind of most settings I've ever seen of an orphanage, there's no mean or evil people in the orphanage. So usually I was like waiting for you know an adult to come along and be terrible, but that didn't happen. Yeah, it was quite refreshing actually. The or- the orphanage was portrayed as this really attractive place. Like there were no there was no evil headmistress. Yeah. No. Uh, there were no, there were uh, there, there's only sort of one villain character. I would say, uh, uh, Chris, what, what what were your thoughts about the? I really movie? liked it. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, you know, I think we've all watched these endless, this endless stream of anodyne uh, CGI animated movies from the States, like The Secret Life of Pets. I mean, what oh. is that? Yes. And then we you get something like that. this. Oh, that's not good film. Or Trolls or stuff like that. Then you get a movie like this, which is really original and refreshing. And it was beautifully animated in that sort of stop motion puppeteer uh, a way that, you know, like uh, animation do or Aardman do but in a much more realistic way. And I, I thought it was really, really lovely. It really was lovely. Very grounded, wasn't it, in mm. reality? It, didn't, it certainly didn't shy away from some of the sort of darker things in our world, but it didn't at any time feel cynical. It, it sort of found the joy in the childhood experience, and it very much felt like we were, we were at that level, uh, at their level. I mean, you sort of... You, you get the world through their eyes, and we were laughing at the... At the beginning, because the uh, the BBFC rating came up, and it was PG because of mild sex sex references. Yeah, and we were like, "What? Yeah, oh, yeah. What sex references are going to be in this?" But sex you... was pretty explicitly referenced. I thought for an older <laughs> kid would know what they were talking about. That's oh, what it, just, it reminded me of conversations I had uh, when I was learning about the sex uh, with, my, <laughs> with my with my kids. That's why that's what I call it. Uh, that's what I still call it, and they, and they hope that I ever get some. Um, <laughs> The, and yeah, and it, 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 you know, it is. It's the conversations I had when I was a kid. Like, what do you do? What do you do? Well, you just use a woman, yes, <laughs> and you you wiggle around a bit, <laughs> and then and then something happens. Wow! Tell me more about this mystical act. And, and then they explode. Like yeah. <laughs> and then that... yeah. Then your willy explodes. <laughs> what? No. A lot That's of horrible. the comedy was was rooted in that, but it was excellent. I will say this: this film was was quite funny. I think we all laughed several times. Yeah. Um, Cathy, what about you? What are, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, I loved it. I was expecting to love it, and I did love it. But I hadn't seen a trailer or anything, so I didn't realise how visually beautiful it was. It's really unusual animation. I urge people, if you're not going to see the movie, just look up, um, watch a trailer, or look up the poster. Um, they're really, yeah, very unusually done, the kids. And, like, Courgette has blue hair, and god bless him he's so unattractive like he's just <laughs> he's so cute like he's got blue hair a bright red nose a bright red ears and i love that everyone's nose matched their ears did you notice that if they had a yellow nose they had yellow near ears it was really cute and um, but in that like you know it's really shocking actually in the opening scene to see his mother drinking and throwing beer cans on the st- ground and he's picking them up and i thought that was really shocking and, um, and you know, other kids are mentioning things like their parents do drugs. One girl's father had, you know, killed her mother. Yeah. So that was all really interesting. Um, so, yeah, I loved it. And this isn't a criticism at all because I really loved it. But it, it felt like a long enough 67 minutes. Like, I don't think they could have done it for much longer. Um, it so didn't I admire the restraint. Welcome. No, because often you can make something that's so beautiful and you've such a lovely setting and then you can get carried away with just going with it yeah they could have thrown in you know six more subplots if they'd wanted yeah. and they could have gone but yeah. it did, didn't need it no let this be a lesson to uh, screenwriters everywhere because this tells uh, a story not just of Courgette but of some of the other kids as well wraps it up in 66 minutes you, you feel you get to know most of these characters they're not just archetypes there's, yep. there's really interesting little twists and turns not plot wise no one's like Getting proper mental health care can help you feel more like you. That's why Cerebral offers convenient access to online mental health services, including therapy and medication management. Cerebral's diverse clinician team can help with anxiety, insomnia, relationship issues, workplace stress, and more. 
You can schedule and communicate with your care team through Cerebral's mobile app and attend your sessions from the comfort of your own home. Get started with or without insurance. Plus, you can use your FSA or HSA. Start your first month for 50% off at Cerebral.com slash ACAST. Kaiser Soze, but there's one character, <laughs> Simon, who you think is going to be that very typical bully within the, uh, the orphanage. And turns out to be a thoroughly decent cove, and I really enjoyed that. I also enjoyed little touches, like you can see each of the kids has been touched physically in some way. Like each of them yeah. has like a scar or plasters on them, yeah. uh, or an affectation. There's a, a girl called Alice who, you know, covers her hair, her eyes with her hair when she's feeling particularly down. Uh, I just thought it was full of lovely little touches, and for the most part, really heartwarming characters the, the Nick Offerman character who's a, a cop who has a special bond with Courgette yeah, I loved him yeah that's him now monitoring us just in case yeah. <laughs> yeah. and the uh, the teachers were felt sort of nicely rounded they each, yeah. they each had their own little subplots did you notice they only get history lessons or like evolutionary biology <laughs> <laughs> that's all they learned about yeah you. that's yeah. the two most fundamental uh, Creationists are going to hate this film. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the DUP are not happy about this movie. <laughs> well, now that they're in power, they might get a band. They will, might do. I will say, going back to the the, the visuals, um, you've kind of covered off the, the the animation style. I thought it was beautiful, but just the way a lot of the shots were framed w- was was quite gorgeous. Uh, I didn't catch the director's name, but it's like it's just yeah. he has a real eye, and a lot of the yeah. I'm a, I'm a sort of a nerd for typography and fonts and uh, the way the, the, the way the credits were Dave's biggest positioned. enemy in life is Comic Sans MS by the way <laughs> he talks Comic about Sans that Sans so much um, but the, yeah, the, a, lot, a lot of the positioning of the opening credits just really set me off I was like oh I like this movie oh, yeah. already oh yeah beauty done yeah beauty done. Uh, Cloud uh, Barras is the director's name but uh, and this, this movie won the best adapted screenplay award at the Césars which we discussed beforehand was the French Oscars and you Lay can see why, because it's such a, oh, yes, a beautifully judged screenplay. And I um, read that the screenplay was written by, and I haven't seen the movie, but I've heard it's very good, the woman who wrote Girlhood. Have you seen yes, that movie? Yes, yes, yeah. great film. So she wrote great this screenplay. Film. So it's interesting to get someone like that to write. Do you think it's, is it a kid's movie? I mean, there was no kids at our screening. I think it's an adult movie. I don't know. I think it's a kid's movie. I think yeah? kids will get it. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think they'll watch yeah. it? Or do you think their parents will take them to it? Uh, no, I don't think they will. And I think that's one of the, it's one of the great shames of movies like this. Is that you don't... You know, it doesn't have the marketing drive of... Uh, again, I'm going to be just kicking my secret, uh, secret life of pets. But <laughs> <Yeah>. something <laughs> yeah. like that, that you know, has... Not Pixar. We'll take Pixar out of the equation. But some of the other stuff, like Blue Sky or Illumination, it doesn't have the marketing drive of those. And kids look at those, and they look at the the, uh, the, the funny talking animals, and they want to go see that film. I don't necessarily know that kids would want to go see this film, but they but they bloody well should, because it really reflected childhood for me in a way that, yeah. that very few films, I think, have managed. If it had minions in it, they would have <laughs> gone. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. But it's interesting because they're talking about sex and booze and alcohol and drugs. And yeah, I wonder as an adult if you brought your kid to it just thinking, oh, it's an animated movie, and then you'd be like, whoops. <laughs> but actually, it, it again, it, it, it always uh, puts the audience at the kid's level, and you only ever hear these things described from their perspective. And it's very important to, to address these things. It doesn't shy away from real life, and it's, um, it gives the kids, that, that, that kid's point of view, that sort of beautiful innocence that you can only get from the mouth of a, children, a child. And I think South Park sort of nailed that as well. But they South Park t- nails mm. beautiful No, 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 innocence. not beautiful, but the South Park went for the, for, the, for the humour angle as well. But it's like, there's something, the, the writers really just nailed um, a child's perspective on things without it being too, I don't know, forced. Mm. Just little things. Like it's a, it's a, a movie that starts really darkly. I mean, it's a movie that starts, you know, not being around the bush with the protagonist accidentally killing his mum <laughs> yeah. and for any film to recover from that tonally but also to have you rooting for this guy which you are from the off because he's got this really sad oh, pathetic so existence sad. beer cans strewn everywhere that you know his mum's drinking not he he's not drinking he's nine years old so you never you know you never know um <laughs> and then what happens with his mum happens and most movies would really really struggle They'd be just plunged in this maelstrom of darkness. And this movie <laughs> yeah. this movie brings it back really, really quickly. It's not at all the movie that I think Hollywood would have made, which would have been a much more gothic orphanage, 
with a Tim much Burton. more conventional yeah like yeah. a Tim Burton thing a much yeah. more conventional villain and it's interesting that it was up for an Oscar very rightfully so in a very strong year where Zootropolis and Moana were in, in the same category yeah. and obviously Zootropolis won and I think my, my understanding of Zootropolis winning aside from it being a really enjoyable movie because I loved it was it had that really big message of inclusion and gen, a lot of gender stuff and I felt like that was kind of the zeitgeist and, and it deserved to win in that sense I don't I don't see that this would have deserved to win over that even though I see them as both very good movies I don't know what you guys think this is a more this is a more beautiful movie uh, this, yeah it's more poignant Zootropolis was probably overall a better little entertainment package mm-hmm. I guess I it has to see with the sloths yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, love that scene. Funny. That was hilarious. And it had the real thing around inclusion, and you know, don't yeah. be racist. Racist, like it was just had don't more messages. Racist. Yeah, whereas this is a very small <laughs> little story. Um, so yeah, both equally. I wasn't. I was wondering if I would come out of this thinking it should have won, but no, I think I would have been happy for that either or Moana to win. Sort of an interesting sort of a multicultural spread, um, yeah. in, in it sort of represented France's diversity quite nicely as well. I thought. Right, you guys stop while you're talking. I'm going to get a photo with the park behind us. <laughs> oh my live god! Live on the podcast. Live photo on, on the podcast. Photograph. Chrissy, you take it. Happening? You longer than me. Yeah. Are we doing selfie? Yeah. All right. Hang on. I'll well, otherwise you're not in it, and no one will believe us. No this is podcast this gold. There we go. This is happening. Uh, Should we get the microphone in. The microphone's in. We're smiling. So right, silence. This way. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Amazing. Three Amazing. such attractive Irish people as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, you were saying beforehand that you, you feel like your Irish accent's getting more pronounced. Oh, no, uh, Dave, you're right there. <laughs> you're right there, me old lad. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is, a little bit. I mean, I, I, I don't get to go home that often. And uh, So we brought home to you. You brought home to me. But my accent definitely has... My, my, you know, I've got such a weird accent. Over the years, people have said to me... Which part of which part of America are you from? I've had that. <laughs> which part of Norway are you from? I've had that. And the best Norway. one I ever had, Norway. yeah, Norway. The best part I ever had was uh, someone said to me, "Oh, so you're French Canadian?" No. <laughs> I can't even speak French. There's no Canada <laughs> yeah. like French Canada. And I can't even speak Canadian. So. I would have thought you were from South Dublin. Really? Yeah, but you're from Northern Ireland. Ah, uh, yeah. no, you've got that. You've got that uh, Northern twang for sure. Yes. Yeah. Is that because I'm? dressed like an orange minute um, oh yeah we have <laughs> described your um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it is like you're ready for the march <laughs> I'm ready right we're, now we're getting into marching season now yeah. oh, I'm getting very excited about it it's going to be amazing marching through Greenwich just me <laughs> just me with my pipe <laughs> um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what else to say about the movie uh, I mean, I'd recommend it's a going it. review We've, it's, hard to, it's hard to say much when we're all just like yeah it was brilliant yeah and I think do Don't you know what it. Like people Did it make you cry Yes, at it the did. end, yeah, Aww. but only a little bit. And I tend to be How very many... easily emotionally manipulated, so I admired that this movie didn't do that because it could have made you cry for What's the whole movie. What's a little bit? How many milliliters did you? Like I just this? cried right at the end because there was a very nice scene where someone said you can cry when you're happy too, and that made me cry. Yep, that's the one that got yeah, me. Yeah, I know. I actually saw tears streaming down Dave's face. Uh, I wouldn't say streaming. I would say there streaming. were drops. There was moisture. <laughs> It was sort of a, it was glistening. Chris, you didn't cry. Yeah. No, I'm I'm, I'm a hard cry okay. in movies. Yeah, I'm tough, but I felt myself a couple of times going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there was a bit of Is potential. that what that was? I was wondering yeah. if the whimpering yeah, was, was next to <laughs> me. <laughs> well, at one point I saw him um, written behind him in French because obviously we watched it. Oh yeah, we forgot to say it wasn't subtitled. We watched oh, the yeah. American voiceover, and um, behind him was written Le Aubergine. <laughs> so I want to now find out the name of the movie in French. No, that's the sequel. The um, <laughs> My Life as an Aubergine. Yeah. But an aubergine is a courgette. We've established it's a, No, it's not. Hang on. So hang on. Let's, go, hang on. let's move on to Vegetable Corner Dave, you here. didn't listen to the start of our own podcast. That's a zucchini. A it's zucchini. Like the, uh, oh, shit, you're right. An aubergine yeah. is, is also known Sorry, as an Sorry, I'm plant. getting... Excuse me, I'm getting aubergines and zucchini. And what was, a, what was a pepper again in Australia? Capsicum. 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 <laughs> I'll never get over that. No, no and you have to say capsicum. Because otherwise, if you're ordering a sandwich with pepper, they're like, they think you want, you know, actual pepper that you... Like salt. Whatever that's... What's that breed called? I was... I was Flavoring. I was actually thinking as well about the the zucchini thing because it would have meant that any time his name was mentioned then they would have had to do several takes right <laughs> for the different markets so Nick Offerman would have had to repeat all his lines while using the word zucchini <laughs> oh yeah in that amazing voice yeah. Nick Offerman sounded good <laughs> oh, he was yeah. great do you know speaking of another <laughs> podcast I heard a really um, I really enjoyed an interview with Nick Offerman and you know his wife um, yes, Megan Mullally. Megan Mullally, yes. They did. They were on the Alec Baldwin podcast. Do you ever listen to that? Oh, uh, yeah. He's, well, yeah, he's great. Yeah, so Speaking they're on that. Voices. You should listen to them. They're a really funny, interesting couple. 
But speaking of other podcasts, Chris, you should tell everyone where they can find your work if they don't already know. Oh, see, that's the sort of beautiful, oh, seamless segue that that's only Kathy can do. <laughs> I can see now why you guys won the awards. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, okay, so you can find me. I'm on very busy roads. So I'll talk a little louder, but you can find... What? There's what? a bus, sorry. That's a, that's a 180 bus. That's another, that's another one. Now we get some cars. We'll be crossing soon into a much quieter street. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on the Empire Podcast every week. Yes, uh, well, most weeks when I when I can be bothered turning up, you can find me on the Empire podcast uh, along with the rest of the Empire team. It's a lot of fun. We talk about movies and we do spoiler specials. So if you don't already listen to that, then you should listen to that and uh, keep keep in peel for a, a solo venture. He said optimistically, yes. coming coming soon. We've ha- we've had a bit of an inside peek of it. Uh, we won't spoil what it is, but uh, it sounds very exciting. You said, solo you know, podcast venture. Yeah. 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 You said to me, Dave, and I quote, this is the greatest idea for a podcast I've ever heard. <laughs> yes. I am blessed to be You're in your not presence. not paraphrasing. I'm, st- I'm still quoting. Direct quotes. Yeah. You forgot to mention I was on my knees, uh, <laughs> sort of bowing down to you. You were. Yeah. Um, and thank you, you Chris, because Chris tweeted about our podcast, and we got, I think, loads of loon listeners from it and people tweeting us. And one of the yeah, guys I work sure. with um, ran over to my desk a few days afterwards. You know the way, like, once a week, Twitter will send you a roundup of people you follow, kind of yeah. highlights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he ran over and went... Oh my God, Chris Eunice tweeted about you. And I was like, I know, we've already been DMing him, it's fine. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that was highly exciting well, for us. This is, I, I think this is an amazing idea for a podcast and uh, I very much enjoy it. And I'm so sorry for ruining it by being on it. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. Uh, no, thanks again for coming on, Chris. We're just gushing now. We're just, yeah, we're just gushing. It's fine, Absolute gushing. Can we just say a final point before we, you know, before you guys, you know, kill me <laughs> as you promised to do <laughs> yeah you're going out on a high though 66 minutes yeah, yeah. we just talk about that that's amazing come yeah. on guys I, I tend to look at my watch quite a lot in movies because you know it just gives you something to do <laughs> and most of the time it's out of boredom most of the time it's out of oh my god how long do I have left of this shit and today it was like I'm looking at my watch because this is going great guns and we're 30 minutes in and oh my god there's only 30 minutes left <laughs> 66 minutes with credits. Yes. Oh, yes. I didn't even think of that. And so if you're pregnant, so if you've got, you know, incredibly small Which bladder. Not, but <laughs> yeah, you are, yes. Or if it's, um, you've got a bad back from being pregnant. This is amazing. I was just getting to that point where I was like, I'm uncomfortable now. And then it was over. So that was good. And this is uh, this is what happened to us with, in terms of length when we went to see Baywatch. Dog shit. Baywatch. And we realized there was, I think we realized Dutch. there was 45 minutes left when we thought we oh were at the God. terrible climax in the morgue and we just left. I was yeah, like, I can't do out. this. Fair play to you because you left that and, uh, you know, when I watch movies, I do so in a mostly professional capacity. Yeah, you have to keep watching I can't. I can't leave. The only film I've walked out of, I think, since I went to Empire uh, was that dreadful Seth MacFarlane movie, A Million Ways to Die in the West. Oh. And I wasn't oh God, reviewing I it. it. And I, I knew, you know, I t- turned, there was a point where I think Charlize Theron turns to uh, Seth MacFarlane and goes, you know what, life's too short for, you know, to do something. I turned to my friend and I went, she's absolutely right. <laughs> I stood up and I walked out. Nice. I wanted to walk out of Baywatch, but I, I ultimately But you were being fast. paid to review it. That's what I said to Dave. This is our Sunday afternoon, so we yeah. don't have to be here. No, but fair yeah. play to you for actually getting up and walking out of this stuff. Uh, yes, by the way, there's lots of dog poo around here. This is uh, one of the yeah. dog are living in Greenwich. So. <laughs> painting, a, painting a picture here. Yeah. It's quite a, like a really minefield of, of dog shit. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Chris, for coming. Thank yes, you. and you can follow us at The Cinemile on Twitter. If you don't already, uh, please do subscribe to us. Um, and head over to iTunes. we're on iTunes if you haven't subscribed to us yet uh, we're also on Acast and leave us a review if you don't mind because uh, that really helps us get noticed and it helps our egos you know really, we, we love want, reviews we want to be massaged well, someone left a review last week um, that said Kathy doesn't know what a spoiler is but it was a five star review so I loved it I think they were referring to um, our life uh, review where we were going into the movie and, and you didn't know anything about it and I said well you know, they're astronauts. And you went, what? Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, even though, you know, that was on the poster yeah. that they're astronauts. Maybe so, that's... Well, whoever you are, could you just tweet us and let us know what you were referring to? Yes, please. Yes. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it here. Um, Chris, thanks again. And um, Thank you. see you next time. Bye. You're welcome anytime. Bye. Bye. Sometimes we cry when we're happy. Isn't that right? <laughs>